Hello all you beautiful people, my name is Zach Dowdy and today we're going to be talking about how to make DIY skate coping. Basically out of little tubes, these PVC pipes. I made beer can coping a while back, basically out of aluminum cans. But what we're going to do in this video is use these little tubes, cut them up to make skate coping. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators, exploring new skills, deepening existing passions, and getting lost in creativity. Some of you have asked how I color grade and edit my videos. There's so much information about color grading. In specific, on Skillshare, there's a class called Color Grading for Filmmaking, the Vision, Art, and Science. This really helped me understand the science of color grading not just rushing me into expecting a certain result, which has allowed me to better understand the process. In return, I can finally color grade my videos in a way that I've always really wanted to. So having a sponsor like Skillshare really is an honor because without a platform like Skillshare, I wouldn't be where I am today with the knowledge I've been able to gain at my own discretion. First 1,000 of you subscribers to click the link in the description will get one month of free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. So these are called Valencia pipes. I picked them up from Lowe's. They're about $8 each, I believe. You can use PVC. I just couldn't find any PVC pipes that was big enough for this. And you want it to be like semi-thick because you don't want it to burst. Concrete does get pretty heavy once you start stuffing it. So the first step is basically going to be cutting these. And I really want to get a symmetrical cut to make sure everything is even. So once you cut this in half, this is going to be two actually, two pieces of coping. And I got three all together, meaning we're gonna have six blocks all together, being two feet long. We're gonna have a 12 foot long piece of coping by the end of this video. So first step is to basically cut these in half and I wanna cut them symmetrical so that each piece is the same size. All right, so basically we have our tubes all marked up, ready to cut. Just gonna make a couple cuts, cut them all in half so you just have that shape of coping basically. Then we're gonna fill it with concrete. All right, so we got our pieces cut up and I'm kind of debating if I got too small of pipes. I got three inches, so maybe a four inches if you're gonna do this. It still looks like they're big enough to grind on. You just might not be able to lock into grinds as well as I thought. So maybe getting bigger ones might've been a better idea, but this is always experimenting trial and error. So next step is basically to fill these with concrete. Somebody told me when you're doing forms like these to add oil and then the separation from the concrete and the forms is a lot easier. So before I add concrete, I will put some oil all over all these and I got my mini little concrete mixer back there. I made a video on all the different DIY tools I have. I'll leave a little link up above and this is one of the ones when I'm making something at home I could definitely utilize and save my back. So we're going to mix some concrete, rub some oil on these forms and uh, fill them up and then vibrate them. The reason you vibrate them is because you want to avoid any honeycombs or the concrete not being nice and exposed. You basically want a really smooth surface for coping. You don't want any aggravated areas. You don't want like exposed concrete. You want it to be nice and smooth. So I'll show you how to do that once we mix all of our concrete. All right, I jumped into some clothes I don't care much about because you're always getting filthy when you're laying some concrete. So I'm gonna use my little mini mixer, get the quick creek in there. Probably just gonna try to mix one bag and see how far that goes. Basically, from here, I got the oil on there, spread it around, got my concrete right here. I'm just gonna start filling our forms, use our trowel, little float, just to kind of get everything flat. And then I'm gonna hit it with a vibrator. Yeah, I said vibrator, you know, massage gun thing. You, you, you get what I'm saying. 
and that's basically gonna aggravate everything and bring everything to the surface so we get that nice smooth finish. It's been about 10 days of water curing, leaving them in all the concrete blocks in there. The idea is it's just going to make them a lot harder, a lot stronger to take the abuse. As you can see, some turned out longer, some broke, but uh, we're going to make all of them work no matter what. We can connect them. Like this is like one of the worst ones probably, but uh, once we go and install it, I'll show you how we can connect them all. These are one of the better ones where they're nice and long. I think putting rebar in would have helped for sure and having bigger piping is going to help as well. Just let, let the concrete really grab together because these are so small. There's not much for the concrete to really grab and lock onto. So I was definitely rushing through the process. Once I had the concrete wet, I was just filling it and trying to get everything, you know, in there and really shake it off to get all the, you know, nice smooth top finish and didn't realize the beginning and end of the molds didn't have anything stopping the concrete from going out. So I kind of tried to get creative and use some cinder blocks and just different things to make sure that didn't happen. But that is something you should definitely try to avoid is really block off the beginning and end marks using wood or anything really so that you can just pull it away and it can create a nice solid form. So yeah, that was a learning lesson for me. For the next batch, I'm definitely going to block it off a little bit better. But uh, you know, that's DIY. You got to roll the punches. Now we are ready to go and install the coping. I shaved off all the edges so we can get a nice sharp meet up with each piece of coping. That's kind of important. Otherwise the jagged edge might be hard to meet up. So yeah, definitely do that. Hi Marty. I got all my materials here. I got my sponge, my concrete adhesive, which is really helpful. I got my trowels, my bucket, my gloves, water, coping, specs mix, which we're gonna use to install it in mortar essentially. So let's head to the spot. You know, building DIY spots, you can do it with your friends or you can do it alone. It really doesn't matter. But here we are trying to figure out where to install it. It's a really open space. As you can see, it's really cool. But the thing about it is you have all these sandbags sort of like keeping it from getting flooded. And I don't want this place to flood, so I don't want to mess with those. And right here seems to be a really convenient spot. So I'm going to line all our coping up and then we'll get into the installing coping steps. I must say it is oddly quiet out here. It's gonna be uh, interesting to see what happens when I drill, because I do have to drill in. That is the next step. I lined up the coping. I did one finger in between each other. That's where we'll have the ground connecting each spot. But first, basically I'm gonna drill into the ground, kind of so we make a good bonding point. We want the old concrete to bond in with the bottom of our coping and the mortar that we're gonna mix after we get everything drilled out. So right now, basically just gotta chip up some of the concrete where we're gonna put our new existing coping. We got everything grinded down nice and ready to basically start mixing our mortar and then putting it on there and setting and installing our coping. It's pretty simple from here. Like 
doesn't take much. Slapping the concrete on there, then putting the coping on top of that, and then just filling the in-between grout work. Um, pretty exciting. I kind of had to balance it too. Like I could grind the ground more and get it really fixed in there. Like I can shape it all out and do it really good, and that would be nice. But the thing is. I don't want to grind too long because there are neighbors nearby and that's with every DIY spot. You have to like balance the integrity of the spot without the consideration of the neighborhood and the bus factor. So let's get to mixing. All right, I got most of the heavy lifting done. We got it all looking really good, pretty buttered up. Troweled it from the front and the back, got it in the middle, got it out. Now I'm gonna use a sponge. It's gonna be really helpful to get all those kind of fine edges that are hard to get with the trowel. So sponge is super helpful for a job like this. Kind of the final cut, but from here, it's pretty easy, kind of a waiting game. We're gonna come back in two days and skate it, but let's uh, touch it up. I'm gonna give everything like two days to dry. It is a Friday, so I'll probably come back Monday afternoon and get a skate session on it, lacquer it all up, get some grinds on it, but it looks really good. I'm really excited to skate it. It looks kind of better than I actually thought it was gonna come out. This is gonna be really fun just for roll-on grinds, so many different things. So I'm gonna clean up shop, make sure you clean all your tools when you're doing DIY. You wanna make sure they last, especially the sponge, trowels, everything. So clean everything up, pack it up, and come back. All packed up and ready to go. I'm pretty excited how this looks. Looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun. And hopefully if it sticks and the community doesn't mind, and that's with every DIY spot, you never know. So if it sticks, if people don't mind, then we can definitely build some more stuff and uh, enjoy the space if people allow that. It is really up to the community in this area. So let's check back in a couple days. We are back to check on the cured concrete. Speaking of concrete, actually, I just got done with the dentist. I just finished two root canals. I got the caps taken off. So speaking of wet concrete, there's concrete in my mouth drying. But one thing I didn't consider about this spot is this water right here. Last time, last few times I came here, there wasn't this water stream. And there's basically a stream of water going from one pipe to another. I mean, this is irrigation area. This is what it is for. So there is that to consider. But the coping looks good. It's on here. It's ready to go. That's pretty much how you make DIY skateboard coping beginner style. It's all installed. I'm gonna put some lacquer down. It's gonna help us grind it. So now we're gonna get a couple tricks on here, test it out, finish up this video. And to be honest, my camera is dying, so I might have to finish this on my iPhone. I never like doing that, excuse me, but today is one of the days where I really wanna skate this and just show you guys, finish up this awesome DIY skateboard coping. You can definitely make this happen for yourself at home, no matter what. This is a super fun beginner spot, expert. Anybody can skate this, have a good time. Hope you guys enjoyed this DIY skate video. Make sure you smash that like button if you did enjoy it. Subscribe if you're not ready. And we'll see you in the next one. Mash.